Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and my Ancient America series, I think it's important to cover just about any story you can find and compile them all in one place. You got to be thorough when trying to get answers, but we are going down to Wilsall, Montana, and this is a story I came across a few nights ago, and I guess I was kind of whispering to myself when my brother was sitting here with me and he knew I found something that I was <laughs> interested in, but this is a story that I find fascinating and I want to share it today. And I haven't covered anything in Montana and I'm trying to cover a story in every state. That is a little hard to do. So here's a story from Montana I find super important. But this is Wilsall, Montana, and you see these streams coming off of here. And this is fairly close to a region of uh, the Northwest that Randall Carlson has talked about, fairly close. But what they found here in 1968 was super important to the investigation of what went on in the very ancient past in North America. And I just want to go to a few websites. Now here is sciencemagazine.org and I will leave the link below. But here are some artifacts they found near Wilsall, Montana, 1968 when a little boy's skeleton was found, and it says, Native Americans descend from ancient Montana boy, and this is dated February 12, 2014. It says, in 1968, when Sarah Anzik was two years old, the construction worker discovered more than 100 stone and bone tools on her family's land near Wilshaw, Montana. The artifacts were blanketed with red ochre, and with them, also covered with ochre, was the skull of a young child in the years since, archaeologists concluded that the skull was about 12,700 years old, the oldest known burial in North America, and that the tools belonged to the Clovis culture, one of the first in the New World. In red ochre, that has been found all the way through the mound builder site, so that must have been highly important. It says, meanwhile, Sarah Anzik grew up and became a genome researcher at the National Institute of Health and dreamed of sequencing the rare bones. And that is about maybe the fourth or fifth article or story I've done where somebody found something when they were young and then it influenced what they did in their later life and they became a researcher. This week, she is a second author on a paper in Nature that reports the complete sequence of the Anzic child's nuclear genome. And that's, I guess, the name they gave this young child, the Anzic child, based on the name of the researcher or the person who found it. It says the sequencing effort led by DNA experts uh, of the University of Copenhagen comes to a dramatic conclusion. The one to two year old Clovis child now known to be a boy is directly ancestral to today's native people from Central and South America. Their data and very convincing that the Clovis Anzic child was part of the population that gave rise to North, Central and Southern American groups says geneticist Connie Mulligan of the University of Florida in Gainesville. If correct, the findings would refute the Salutrian hypothesis, which postulates that ancient migrants from Western Europe founded the Clovis culture. And that might do it in this individual case, but that doesn't say that the Salutrians were not here at one time. Here is Montana history revealed. And I guess they gave this child a reburial right near the original spot where this child was found. Here are some artifacts. Let's blow that up a little. Here are some Clovis artifacts that were found near this discovery of the child. And here is an article from the Billings Gazette that says the child remains and the artifacts are from the same era. It says, according to research, the so-called Anzic one child and more than 100 bone and stone tools that were buried near him were from the same era. It says this is the oldest known Clovis burial, and I'm not sure if that has changed in the last four years. But it says, the fractured skull of the infant, estimated to have been between 12 and 18 months old when he died of unknown causes, was discovered in a hillside by workers in 1968. Wilsall is the closest town to the discovery, located in the Shields Valley between the Bridger and Crazy Mountains. While removing talus for the hill for a construction project, the huge cache of stone and bone tools tumbled out of the mound amid a puff of red dust. The dust was ochre, a powder deriving from crushed red stone 
and used for pictographs as well as ceremonial purposes by Native Americans, the discovery is the oldest known human burial site in North America dating back to a time when woolly mammoths, American camels, and dire wolves roamed a lush area marked by huge receding ice sheets. Here is an update on the story from June of this year. And they did some redating, and I guess there was a second child found here. And that one was found to be less than 10,000 years old, slightly, I guess. But the tools in the Clovis artifacts are solidly dated at about 13,000 years ago. But the redating of the Anzic one child, maybe not 12,700 years old, but maybe comes from the time period around 11,600 years ago. So both of those, either one of those dates, it kind of gets my antenna up. What exactly happened to this child 12,700 years ago or 11,700 years ago in that time frame? There are windows there. We know that something bad happened in each of those windows. So that is really kind of an eerie feeling. What did this boy go through? What did the people he was related to go through in this area of the world? But a ceremonial burial, and this is just near, I guess this white post is near the spot. But a ceremonial burial coming from the time window, from these dates that Randall Carlson has talked about. And by the way, him and Graham Hancock, uh, there is a talk on Geocosmic Rex that he just uploaded yesterday that I thoroughly enjoyed. And as a kid growing up in Minnesota, and wondering the same things as Randall Carlson did, uh, looking at the landscape. I've, I thoroughly enjoyed this video, and I'll leave the link below. But have we had an actual victim talked about from this exact same time period, either 12,800 years ago or 11,600 years ago, that we know something happened? Have we actually had a victim that we have talked about? Well, here we go. When you're looking... At a big picture such as ancient America, the vast time frame, the different cultures, well, I think you have to look at everything you can, be thorough, don't go after answers right away. And I've been watching some of you guys that don't have a lot of subs and have just started channels or have had channels for a while, and I just haven't mentioned you yet, and I'm going to get around to it, but I think you're doing a good job. You're no different than I was back then. The only difference between me and you is I'd done this a little more. But uh, I've left comments on some of your videos. Best advice I can give to you about going after mysteries is don't go after them right away. Be thorough. Look into as much as you can and compile the evidence and let the story just kind of unfold. That's what I did with the Shroud of Turin. I never tried to solve that mystery. And then when it presented itself, I knew it right away. Be thorough. Read as much as you can. That's the best advice I can give you. But this video here, sometimes scientists that are invested in their individual fields don't line their work up with people who are into catastrophism. Like, is that a word? Catastrophism? Did I just say the right word? Like uh, Randall Carlson, who are proving at the exact same time they're something extremely bad happened in this region of the world well i'm just trying to connect some dots here trying to put together a thorough picture i got a weird feeling about this one hope you thought this was interesting and you all have a very nice day